Welcome to Night School for Motorcycle Mechanics, Session 3. Six tests every four-stroke engine must pass. Troubleshooting a dead engine at your shop or at the side of the road most often involves fuel or spark needs. These are common problems when a well-running engine suddenly stalls to a stop or won't start. While fuel supply and ignition are two important requirements for any internal combustion engine, Tonight's session won't begin there. Four additional concerns can cause an engine to stop, fail to crank over, or lose considerable power. These four basics are far more concerning than fuel or spark trouble. Whether you are evaluating a used bike prospect bringing a customer's bike into your shop or doing a major tune-up on your motorcycle, these six essential requirements are at the core of four-stroke engine performance. So let's start with the critical four basics. Beyond that would be fuel and ignition troubleshooting. Basic one is adequate lubrication and correct tolerances for the internally lubricated parts. The oil pump circulates oil to critical areas of the engine, including the camshaft and crankshaft bearings, pistons, cylinder walls, timing chain mechanism, the camshaft, and the valve train. If the engine won't crank or kick over, rule out the possibility of piston or bearing seizure. When the engine runs and there is a gauge, be sure the oil pressure is normal. If there are knocks or rattles, pin them down with a chassis ear, an automotive stethoscope, a piece of copper tubing, or a section of PVC pipe. On a lower mileage engine with no issues, the most common cause of lubrication failure or engine seizure is a sudden loss of oil due to an oil leak. On the highway or trail, an oil pump seldom fails, but a loose drain plug, oil filter, or leaky rocker cover gasket can rapidly cause havoc. Basic two is adequate compression and cylinder seal. A traditional compression gauge is okay for a rough estimate of compression. This dynamic testing method often creates false readings due to the moving piston. While the gauge measures air packed into the combustion chamber, there is very little decrease in this air volume as the piston speeds past the cylinder taper. As a result, cylinder wear or taper can go undetected. I've tested engines with a compression gauge that read normal, while a subsequent static test with a leak down tester revealed 75% leak with the piston at TDC. At top dead center, the piston and rings rest at maximum cylinder taper. Here, ring gaps are the widest and piston ring tension is the weakest. When using a compression gauge, hold the throttle wide open. Compression should reach the highest level quickly, not after 20 seconds of electric starter cranking. The lowest reading on a multiple cylinder engine should be within 10% of the highest reading. Both readings must be within the normal range described in the factory workshop manual. Quite often, the lower end of allowable compression is a telltale sign of engine wear. I always move to a leak down test for pinpointing compression loss. The test begins with the piston at TDC on its compression stroke. Valves are closed. A regulated amount of clean compressed air enters the cylinder through the spark plug hole. Note that I said clean. Make sure your compressed air is filtered. The gauge measures the amount of air entering the cylinder and the percentage of air that escapes. This is the percent of cylinder leak that we're looking for. Optimal leakage for a good sealing modern production engine is 8 to 12 percent. In my experience, acceptable leakage for reasonable engine operation is as high as 20%, but this indicates engine wear that will progress fairly fast, especially in a single or twin cylinder motorcycle engine. 8% or less is a standard for racing engines. Zero gap piston rings and precisely machined valves and seats conceal a racing engine to levels as low as 2% leak down. This comes with risks, however, and is impractical for non-racing engine applications. 8 to 12 percent is optimal for highway or enduro use. Uniquely, the leak down test can pinpoint exactly where compression is lost. If air comes out the exhaust pipe, suspect an exhaust valve problem. If air comes out the air filter, suspect intake valve trouble. If steady air is heard from the crankcase breather, suspect piston ring blow-by. 
If air escapes from the head gasket on an air-cooled engine, the head gasket is blown. On a liquid-cooled engine, blown head gasket air may also enter the cooling system. Air bubbles in the radiator coolant are a symptom of a blown head gasket or cracked cylinder head, most commonly around the exhaust valve seat. Block or cylinder casting cracks can cause a leak, too. Cylinder taper and ring wear can be estimated with a leak-down test. At or near TDC, the rings and ring gaps are widest. If taper is significant, the percentage of leak at this piston position will be the highest. Lowering the piston an inch or so will get a better ring seal and show less leakage on the tester. Note that it takes finessing to hold the piston below top dead center for a taper test with a leak down tester. Hold the piston position with the transmission and gear. The piston will want to move downward under air pressure. The only time the piston stays still during a leak down test is with the piston and crankshaft at precise top dead center. Basic three is valve timing. Valve timing is critical for normal valve opening events, compression, intake flow, and exhaust flow. A four-stroke engine has valve mechanisms that open and close at precise moments. The timing of these events involves timing gears or sprockets in a chain, or sometimes a timing belt in engines like the Honda Goldwing or some Ducati engines. Overhead camshaft motorcycle engines most often use a timing chain and sprockets. Pushrod engines can use timing gears. Properly oiled gears last a very long time and they stay accurate. Chains inherently stretch over time. The chain tensioner compensates for slack. However, a stretched chain with a mechanical or hydraulic tensioner will retard valve timing as a chain wears. Excessive wear runs the risk of poor lower speed engine performance. Idle manifold vacuum is lower than normal. An excessively worn chain and tensioner must be replaced. Fortunately, timing chains generally last between motorcycle engine rebuilds. This is not the case with timing belts. They require periodic replacement. Keep in mind that a hydraulic or spring-loaded chain tensioner can wear out. If you suspect chain or belt tensioner wear, inspect the tensioner if it's accessible. Motorcycle engines and tuning rely on making sure all valve train pieces are in top condition and installed properly. Valve timing must be carefully set by the method described in the factory workshop manual. The definitive test of valve timing is the use of a degree wheel. A subtle concern around valve timing is the valve clearance or gap. Valve gap set too closely will open valves early and increase valve opening duration and lift. Loose valve clearances gap too widely open late and reduce valve opening duration and lift. Keep valves adjusted to specification for precise valve timing and opening events. Valve clearance should not change significantly between adjustments. When gaps tighten substantially, this can be a sign of valve face and seat wear or recession. Basic four is correct valve lift. Valve lift is critical. Lift is how much the valve opens measured in inches or millimeters height. This reflects the condition of the camshaft lobes or hydraulic lifters when a motorcycle engine has hydraulic lifters. When a hydraulic lifter on a Harley-Davidson pushrod V-twin collapses or does not receive oil, it will not hold firm as the camshaft lobe attempts to lift the valve. The valve will not open far enough. Similarly, worn camshaft lobes will not open the valves far enough. If a lifter or lobe is defective, the engine will not run smoothly. When an intake valve has inadequate lift, not enough air fuel will enter the cylinder. Loss of lift on the exhaust side reduces normal exhaust flow. Either situation compromises compression and reduces power in the cylinder. Camshaft lobes are hard steel or hardened steel. Camshaft wear is normally negligible over the entire span between engine rebuilds. If a lobe wears notably, the lifter, cam follower, or rocker arm has worn through the camshaft surface hardening and into the softer core of the camshaft. Once here, wear becomes rapid, shedding substantial metal. The hard metal debris from a worn cam lobe or lifter base can contaminate and destroy the engine's bearings, oil pump, crankshaft journals, and other critical parts. 
consider camshaft lobe failure a major event requiring a complete engine teardown to remedy. Valve lift can be measured at the valve spring retainer with a dial indicator. Specifications and details should be available in your factory workshop manual. Valve clearance must be set as indicated for this check. Zero lash for this test would provide true valve lift. Restore the valve clearance gaps after performing this test. You can also read the lobe lift directly at the cam lobe if accessible. Lobe lift is not the same as valve lift. Engines with rocker arms have a rocker ratio. The rocker ratio determines the amount of valve lift. Some engines lift their valves with cam followers that fit between the camshaft lobe and the valve stem. Here, the lobe lift and valve lift measurements would be the same. There is no rocker ratio. In conclusion, if an engine meets these four critical needs, any other trouble is related to fuel and spark demands. Fuel issues can be a clogged fuel filter or petcock, a dirty carburetor or injectors, a faulty EFI fuel pump, incorrect carburetor jets, a stuck float needle, a bad oxygen sensor, defective wiring, or a defective ECU. Weak or no spark can be the CDI module, coil, ECU, wire faults, or a fouled spark plug or plugs. Vacuum leaks also fall into this realm. I consider fuel and spark troubles or vacuum leaks part of tuning. Vacuum loss can also reflect critical basics like loss of compression or valve timing or leaking valves. We will dive into ignition and fuel basics in the coming night class sessions. Fuel system coverage will be traditional gravity-fed carburetors and the contemporary pressurized EFI systems. Vacuum loss or fluctuations in tailpipe pressure tests will be covered in their own session. So please subscribe and join us.